Today we're going to be exploring the Sheboygan Coney Marsh and the critters that live in the water. We are going to be looking for macro invertebrates. You'll need a couple of things. Waterproof boots, some kind of net. This one happens to be a D-ring net with a very fine mesh and a bucket to put your macro invertebrates in which, once you catch them. A macroinvertebrate is an organism that does not have a backbone. Some examples include snails, scud, dragonfly nymphs, amphipods, mayfly nymphs, midge larvae, and back swimmers. The word macro means big. These organisms, however, are not that big. They're actually very small. But what it means in this case is that we can see them without a microscope. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be scooping along the edges of our wetland. And then I'm going to be looking inside of our net to see what I collected. Most of these critters are critters that you can touch. Here's one, put it in my bucket, a snail. Another snail. Lots of little critters today. And what I'm looking for is things that are wiggling as the water leaks out. Leech. Marsh. If you remember yesterday, we caught a bucket of critters, also known as macroinvertebrates. Today, we're going to be identifying those critters. You will need a couple of things. Your catch, a white dish pan, an ice cube tray, a magnifying glass if you have it, tools to catch your critters. I have a spoon and a pipette, some smaller containers, a sheet for recording your identified macro invertebrates and a powder pencil. To get started, you will pour your catch into your dish pan. I've already done that. Then you need to catch a couple of your macro invertebrates. I'm going to use the spoon that I have because it's usually a little bit faster than the pipette. Just going to quickly catch three of them and make sure wherever you put your macro invertebrates you're adding a little bit of water. All right after you've caught it's time to identify. So I'm now going to use my smaller container to catch just one of the critters. Again make sure you add some water. And then what you want to do is look for characteristics. So this one has more than 10 legs. It's brown. It has a hard exterior. And when I looked in the bucket before, I noticed it was crawling on the bottom. So it's probably a macro invertebrate that tends to stay on the bottom of our wetland. Once you've observed a couple of characteristics, go to your dichotomous key. You always start at the top of a dichotomous key. 
there's usually two questions. The first question, does it have no shell or does it have a shell? Well, we decided that ours does not have a shell. So we're going to follow that line to the next question. The next question, is it without a backbone or does it have a backbone? Most of the critters that we're going to see in our wetland will not have a backbone. So they're macroinvertebrates. Big enough to see with your eye, but no backbone. So we'll follow that line. The next question, does it have legs or no legs? Well, we've already determined that it has more than 10 legs. So next, more than 10 legs or three pair of legs? So six. We're gonna back up and go here because we know that it has more than 10, 10 legs. So now we have four choices. Is it a crayfish? And if you look at it, definitely not a crayfish. It's lacking those two big claws for sure. I see six, eight legs here, but I know this one has more than that. So go to the next one. Is it a fairy shrimp? Is it pinkish and feathery? No, it's brown, it's not pinkish. The next choice is a scud or an amphipod. It's shrimp-like and swims on side. It's not shrimp-like at all, and it doesn't swim on its side. The next one is an aquatic isopod or sow bug. Has more than 10 legs, it's brown, and it says it walks on bottom. I think that's it. So now that I know that it's an aquatic isopod, I'm going to record that on my record sheet. And I'm just going to copy what it says on my dichotomous key. So now all you have to do is continue that process over and over again until you've identified all of the macroinvertebrates.